What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about the Mac Mini M2, M2 Pro and stacking it up against the Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip. The results were kind of shocking with the pricing and the specs, so we're going to be going into all of that. I'll show you the base model, the fully loaded model, and what I would recommend for each one of those. And at the very end we'll show you the winner overall. If you guys are new here, my name is Austin Brady. I'm a filmmaker and a content creator, and I make videos about filmmaking, gear reviews, travel, things like that. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Mac Mini M2. So the base model is gonna be 600, so that's bare bones. If you get the fully loaded, it's gonna be about 1900, and then the recommended middle ground that I suggest would be about 1400. So they all have the M2 chip, they all have the eight core CPU, the 10 core GPU, the 16 core neural engine. When we get to memory, you're gonna see that the base has eight gigabytes, then 24 gigabytes on the recommended and 24 on the fully loaded. I recommend getting at least 24 gigabytes. Hopefully up to 32 would be ideal because when you're doing photos or videos or content creation, you just need that memory to be able to run everything smoothly. Base model has 256 gigabytes of storage and then the recommended would be a terabyte and the fully loaded would be two terabytes. I recommend always getting at least a terabyte of storage. Photos and videos are just getting, you know, big file sizes and they're increasing every year as phones and cameras are get better. Gigabyte inner ethernet, the base has just basic, same with the recommended. And then if you want the fully loaded, you can add on the ethernet. It's not, doesn't come standard. I don't even use like a plug-in ethernet. Maybe you do. So that's something that would benefit those that appreciate that. Then at the very bottom, they all have two Thunderbolt 4 ports an HDMI port, two USB-A ports, and then a headphone jack. That's your Mac mini with the M2 chip. As we move towards the M2 Pro, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So the base model will be 1300, the recommended would be 2300, and the fully maxed out M2 Pro would be 4500. So your base model is gonna have the 10 core CPU, as well as the recommended with the 10 core CPU, and then the loaded is gonna have the 12 core CPU. So that's you know two more cores. GPU, base is gonna be 16, recommended 16 and you can go all the way up to 19. They all have a 16 core neural engine. And then for memory, the base is gonna have 16, but like I shared before, you're gonna want at least 32 if you're doing video or photo editing. So 32 gigabytes is recommended. And that's also the max you can go with the M2 Pro. The base is gonna have 512 gigabytes of storage. Obviously we talked about before the recommended would be a terabyte of storage. And then the fully loaded is gonna have eight terabytes, which I think is a little ridiculous. If you like having it all in one, great. A lot of people, content creators, will use external hard drives, so you just have a bunch of external storage, so you don't need that in-house, and it makes it more convenient to move over files to different computers. Gigabyte Ethernet on the base and the recommended. If you wanna add the 10 gigabyte Ethernet, that can be on your fully loaded version. A benefit of getting the M2 Pro version versus the M2 is you're gonna have two more Thunderbolt 4 ports. So these come all with four Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI port, two USB-A ports, and a headphone jack. And if you're a content creator or you're using this computer and you need a lot of external hard drives or different accessories, you're gonna really want to have those extra Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is just you know your USB-C uh, connection. So now moving on to the Mac Studio, I'm gonna show you the base model, the recommended model, and then also my current setup, which is just a little bit more than the recommended, and I'll show you why. So the Mac Studio is just the M1, not the M2. It's the M1 Max chip. These have a 10 core CPU, the base model has 24 and the recommended has 24 GPU. And then my current setup has 32 cores of GPU. They all have 16 coral neural engines. And then the base and the recommended both have 32 gigabytes of unified memory. My setup currently has 64 unified memory because I wanted that extra memory. I didn't want to have to, you can't really upgrade it later. So I wanted to get it all up front, but 32 is very good for most things. And then with storage, you can see there the 512 with the base, one terabyte recommended, and then I happen to get two, just because I like storing a couple more files on my actual computer. They all come standard with 10 gigabyte ethernet, so that's really cool. They all have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI ports, two USB-A ports, headphone jack, two USB-C ports in addition on the front, which is really convenient. And then they also have an extra SD card slot too, which is super convenient when offloading footage. So now, what we've been waiting for is which one is the best one to get and the best bang for buck. And I think the results might surprise you. 
So most professionals are gonna veer towards the Mac Studio because it has more ports, more capability, but it's gonna be more expensive, at least that's what I thought, and the Mac Mini is getting closer and closer to that, but the comparison is gonna be really close. So if you look at getting a Mac Mini with the M2 chip, it's only gonna have eight core CPU. If you jump up to the Mac Mini M2 Pro or the Mac Studio M1 Max, they're both gonna have 10 core CPU. So really good there. With the M2 chip, you're gonna have the 10 core GPU. The M2 Pro is gonna have 16 core GPU and the M1 Max is 24 core GPU. So that's really cool. They all have a 16 core neural engine across the board. M2 chip has 24 gigabytes of memory, but like I said before, you're gonna want at least 32. That's my recommendation. And you can get that both in the M2 Pro chip and the M1 Max chip. They all have uh, one terabyte of storage, that's what I put in for this comparison because you need at least a terabyte in my opinion. Gigabyte of ethernet I left out on the M2 and the M2 Pro. It comes standards, so you kind of have to get it with the M1 Max. I don't think it's necessary because I don't use that. With the M2 chip, you can have two Thunderbolt 4 ports like we talked about before, but it's really, really nice to have four Thunderbolt 4 ports and both the M2 Pro and the M1 Max has that. They all have HDMI ports, two USB-A ports and a headphone jack, and then the M1 Max that has those extra two USB-C ports and an SD card slot. But if you look at the pricing up here, the Mac Mini M2 has, is $1,400, so pretty affordable, great price. And if you're not doing anything too heavy, this is a fantastic computer for you. You obviously have to get a display to go with it. You can get the studio display like I have here, highly recommend that. Or you can find another third party monitor, which is great too. When you jump up to the M2 Pro, it's 2300. So a little bit more, you're getting a lot more ports, you're getting more memory and you're getting more performance. But if you look at the Mac Studio M1 Max, it's 2200 and you have more GPU, you have the same memory, same storage, better uh, gigabyte ethernet if that's something that you need. You have the four Thunderbolt 4 ports and on top of that, you have the USB-C and the SD card slot. So it looks like here, the Mac Studio M1 Max is probably gonna be the best bang for buck if you're someone who can afford this type of computer and you want as much performance as possible in a compact size. Obviously the Mac mini is gonna be smaller, but they still have the seven by seven footprint, just gonna be a little bit taller as you can see here. Obviously the one that I got was just a little bit more upgraded than this, but I truly feel like with these specs, you can get a ton of work done with video or photo or content creation. Whatever you guys are doing, it's gonna be an awesome computer for you. So let me know in the comments. This is kind of an interesting comparison to see how a Mac Studio with an older chip, even though it's the M1 Max, has more ports, it has more capability. The Mac Studio is gonna have better thermals because it has a bigger fan and can cool better. The only catch, but I did hear that the Mac Mini has a better HDMI port. So if that's important to you to stream higher quality video, through an HDMI cord, then maybe the M2 Pro would be good for you. So that's my comparison on the Mac Studio versus the Mac Mini and the different configurations. I feel like I've said Mac and Pro and Max way too many times, but hopefully that was clear and concise for you guys. Sometimes it can be confusing as you're going through all the comparisons even on Apple's website. Let me know in the comments which one you think is the best value or which one you're gonna get or have already purchased. And that's all I've got for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. As well as the Mac Studio M1 Max. <laughs> so many Maxes and Ultras and Pros. Okay. <clears throat>